Stop building groups with individuals who aren't truly progressive and seeing more out of what is going on in a collective as opposed to what they can get out of it for themselves. Like, I'm going to use these people until I can't use them anymore. And then I'm going to hop to the next group. And then now all the stuff that we done internalize with our people. Brain drain. Now it's, a, now it's in some other group. And it's like, it's, it's a weird sense of just like, where's the loyalty? You're literally taking a step back from yourself to throw the oop. Pass the assist. Make yourself an asset and not a liability. Stop building these collectives with people who don't think about the future, who are ready to die tomorrow. No, we, we need people who are thinkers, builders, planters, growers. Like those individuals understand that shit takes time. <laughs>
what you do, you connect people. Yeah. You know, it's mm-hmm. literally, it's called the tribe. Yeah. Then the tribe house. So it's like, it makes sense that, you know, sometimes we kind of separate our upbringing or like we don't realize the value. The value, yeah, exactly. Of our upbringing until value. later stages in our life. Yeah. You know, and it's like now I'm connecting the dots, and you probably connect the dots too. It's like, oh, that makes sense. Holistic living, yeah. and then holistic. You know, that's that's what I'm doing. Holistic living, holistic community, holistic like train of thought. It's, you know, again, what we've been um, like harping on a lot in just tribe house. It's the unlearn and relearn concept of what we all think is supposed to be just regular, like. You know what I'm saying? We're not even talking about anything specific. There's just so many different ways to live and so many different ways to think. And it's not just this one way or this, you know, this box concept, you know. Mm, I love that. Let's let's dig into that. Where did where did the idea of the tribe house kind of germinate so and can become what it, it is today? So tribe so the idea of tribe house uh, came from a spot that I had moved into on 43rd and Princeton. So we um, we were had always been calling ourselves the Wealthy Soul Tribe, and tribe was just the thing that we just, you know, we referred to ourselves. So we, I wanted to really tap into the music scene and the art scene in Chicago. So I had a house on 43rd and Princeton, and I just, I told everybody, I'm like, look, if you guys want to be here, like, you know, this is what we have to do. We have to sit there and really go hard in this arts. Like, if you're an artist, what do you need as an artist? Okay, this guy does this. Well, this is your purpose. Like, everybody here has a purpose. And it became this platform where um, it was essentially a one-stop shop for everything. It was more than just, like, the partying and stuff. It was like... Uh, we had engineers, we had videographers, we had DJs, we had models, we had dancers, we had singers, we had instrumentalists, comedians. It was like, there was just everything going on in this living room and like, you know, full of Park Inglewood. Yeah. And, and we were bringing everybody around, you know, the city out, like just to experience something different, you know. Oh no, just because you go to the South Side doesn't mean you're gonna get robbed or killed because you're white or Asian or Indian. It's like nobody's even thinking about that shit. <laughs> People really trying to have a, a safe space to enjoy the vibes and go home, meet somebody new, you know what I'm saying? Make a new connection, really socially network. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. No, for real. I remember. I was a junior or senior in I, Illinois Tech, not mm. far from actually 43rd, if you just go a little bit east, yeah. you know, 35th and Bronze. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Right literally about train stop away. Yeah. I would like, it would be on Friday, you feel me? They'd be studying. I'd be like, you know what I'm saying? We could go to this party. That, yeah. That's when they had Uber Pool. Yeah. Oh, Uber, the Uber the Pool. Good old day. The living the, shit. The Uber, Uber Pool had oh, is universal. Uber I was worldwide. Pool. I was at Evanston. Because I could sit yeah. there and split rides with whoever the fuck ever. Just like, what? Man, the conversations used to be gas. I used to yes. be like, oh, you're from Mongolia? Yeah, but yeah we used yeah. to meet so many new people. That's so crazy. Fuck COVID for that. That's like, so all other crazy. Shit aside, Uber fuck pool. COVID for getting rid of Uber Pool. Uber Pool was so lit. Like, you definitely <laughs> met so many people during Uber Pool. That's a whole podcast. Damn. It's <laughs> just like what the the shit of Uber. I pool. didn't even think about that. Yeah, like the amount of people I met during Uber Pool. The networking. I know people got fans off Uber Pool. Yes. Like, hey, check my no, music what? Out. Yes, I re- like literally. It was dirt cheap too. It was like you could say if like an actual ride is twenty, you could Uber Pool for like five. five. That's how crazy it was. Five the shit five was. But even like not Damn. to not to go Ooh. off on a tangent, but like yeah, I would like pull over there, you know what I'm saying? And it, it was the spot, and y'all just to keep it going. Yeah, you feel me? Like, and I, I one thing I respected is that it will always be loud, it will be rowdy, mm-hmm. but at the same time, like you would come down and speak to it, and people had a genuine respect, yeah, respect. of of the place of what you stood for, yeah. and then that's kind of hard to come by, you know. And a lot of these other parties, it's like people kind of don't respect. There's no sense of authority. Yeah. And it's like, where do you, why, why do you feel that people really respected the vision of the tribe house? Why, well, why was that different? Well, I, I, feel, <clears throat> I feel like, one, being from New York, uh, 
Um, and even having the ability to like live in the suburbs of Illinois as well before even coming to Chicago. I've always just attacked certain things in a certain way. It's like if you try to shy away uh, from things, then people get a sense of comfortability. Then when you switch up later on, it's like, yeah, you're acting different. You're acting weird. But if I don't know you, I feel it's my job for you to know who I am, how I am. Like, I should not adjust my world to accommodate. I'm creating a platform for everyone to be in. This is my brainchild. So if I know I want a genuine, clean rancho, oh, y'all can get lit. Y'all can be as lit as you want, but you better respect the women. Y'all can be as lit as you want, but don't sit there and think you have to be destroying stuff in the place. Y'all can be as lit as and free as you want. But when we say tribe, everybody else tribe and we respect the mic because at the end of the day, no matter what, we want you to know that you're not out here for a party. You're out here to socially network. You're out here to meet pe people you would otherwise never see because for whatever reason, it's like people on the west side won't go to the north side and they're right next to each other. Or people on the east side won't go to the south side or south side won't go up north because it's too far. And I'm like, I grew up in New York City. This is not too far to travel anywhere in here. And that's why we did. We started on 63rd and Evans. 43rd in Princeton, mm. 47th in Vincennes, 22nd in Homestead. I didn't know this is 63rd. And now, yeah, yeah, very, 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 very few people know about 63rd and Evans because I was super ignorant to Chicago, like where I came from in New York and then where I came from in Schaumburg. That's like, the hood. Yeah. But, I mean, unbeknownst to me, I'm just like, yo, this the college right here, hospital right here. I see a heavy cops presence. I'm like, all right, cool. Nah. No, I, I probably was there like six, seven months mm -hmm. before I moved into, um, before I found a spot on 43rd and Princeton, which was a blessing because I was getting one room. My friend John helped me move in. It was like some stuff where people just like backed out of the move-in deal. So mm -hmm. it was supposed to be like five people and then I ended up being one. And then my friend who helped me move in, he was like, no, nah, we need to get the whole place. He was like, how much money do you have? And it was like all the money I had. And he asked the landlord, like, how much was the upstairs? And he was like, hey, man, if you believe in it, just like, just you, just use the money. Like, we'll figure it out, literally. So it was like all the money I had, all the money he had, he rented the upstairs of the tribe house. And I rented that that main level with that had the chocolate lady in the basement. That's mm. why everybody used those spaces. And I turned that main level into an event space. We airbnb the spot. Like, we utilized it for whatever the fuck we could. Like, it wasn't ours. Like, we didn't own it. Mm -hmm. So The whole place. We just rented the whole place. Mm -hmm. Instead of having neighbors, we were like, no, we're going to take everything. That that would allow you all. Yeah. It was like we, we had to we essentially, hey, this is your last bit of money. If you really believe in this, we have an opportunity to get a whole house. But if you don't then somebody else is going to move in and you're never going to be able to really do what you want to do in here because you're going to get noise complaints, you're going to get this and that, you have to... But you know, with me here, I know what's going on. And it was like, damn, you know, you're right. Like, we can't have neighbors. And then we just ended up, like, really entrenching ourselves in the neighborhood, too. I think, which is what a huge, uh, important aspect of what we did was. We didn't just party. Like, we got to know the neighbors, we got to know the elderly, we helped people with groceries, we cleaned up the neighborhood, we swept the streets, you know, we went to the rec centers with the guys in the, uh, from the block, you know, we, we walked the actual streets so, like, people knew that we were there, like, respectfully, and that the place was also open to them. When shit happened, when they needed a place to safely, you know, celebrate a loss, of a friend or something, they would come to Tribe House. You know what I'm saying? It essentially became almost like a Switzerland mm -hmm. in, you know, Chicago South Side. And that's why we were able to grow, like, grow like that, because people came there with respect. Mm -hmm. It was like something that we really didn't have to force. It was like, you got to know everybody and you respect, it wasn't like, oh, this guy's too hood to be in here. 
or this guy's too white to be in here. It's like, no, everybody needs, I come from a melting pot. So everybody needs to be in the room together, you know? And if you've never been in the room with white and Asians and blah, blah, now you're gonna be in the room. Like, you know, break that weird ass stigma that like, oh, I don't fuck with this side or that side. Chicago not even that big. You know what I'm saying? It's not even that big. And it's a beautiful city with beautiful people just spread out all over the place. You know, we're just trying to destroy that. You know, unlearn and relearn. Now that really, you know, touched me. Especially the part about, you know, just bringing that New York, just your upbringing, your background there. How it was a melting pot. Yeah. Into like, that, that, that paradigm into Chicago. How how much how much are your like beginnings in New York and your upbringing there? How much has that played into like how you respond to this whole Chicago scene? Oh yeah, I mean, it, I mean, I came out here strictly for business. I didn't come out here to like, you know, I didn't come out here for a, a, a new start, like to meet new people. Like that was never the goal. Like I feel like I naturally attract genuine good people bad people like i filter it out through my life i just attract people mm. so my goal was to be focused enough to build and sustain something like you know we want to be artists but there's no rule book or there's no blue nobody is given the real blueprint to how to make artistry sustainable like skipping past the proverbial starving artist stage but actually going out and building a tribe there's so many different um houses in chicago and we we open up the doors to work and collaborate with all the houses why because it makes sense there's an aspect of you that we don't have and because of that we want to sit there and grow in a different light new york what I'm doing, what I'm doing right here in Chicago, if I was trying to do that in New York, it would be 10 times harder. It's not to say that it wouldn't happen, but, you know, like we were saying, we drove past and in prime location, like we were seeing for sale, for rent um, signs, and it's something that I'm not used to. We're used to like, yo, you got to have five hustles. Like, I know lawyers who drive Uber and still do ride sh- like, you know, ride shares and they may have an Airbnb because if you're trying to live that life, you have to make it sustainable. And it's never to- through one thing. It's through opening up your mind and just casting the web and being ex- expansive, you know. And I feel like that's what we really, really focus on in Chicago, being able to do, like, utilize the open market to be expansive and sustainable, you know what I'm saying? So mm. that's a, that that's the huge influence that I've been able to you being able to take that life from New York <clears throat> that yo, you got to hus- you got to have five hustles. It's not no one thing that you do. You got to just attack it in so many different angles. Coming out to Chicago, open market, it's like yo, we got I, I'm a, I'm a hustler. You know, so I'm going to surround myself with hustlers. I'm going to sit there and surround myself with, you know, forward-thinking individuals. And, like, there's so much in this city. There's enough to go around for everybody. So if we got to sit there and create this blueprint, we're going to sit there and, you know, create this blueprint in a sense. Because where is it? Why Why isn't there a major label in Chicago? Makes no sense. What's the major label? Crickets. There's no, like, there's no major record label in Chicago. But some of the some of the biggest artists in the past decade have come out of Chicago. It's, I mean, so, something's got to give. Somebody's got to get these people out here in a room looking at each other like, you know, get off the Hollywood shit. <laughs> like, if y'all really put y'all bread together, y'all could bring somebody out. Y'all could bring somebody big out, put y'all artists on. And now y'all sitting there doing something different. Now it becomes a whole conglomerate of these teams bringing out these big names to put their artists on. They're not even thinking like that. It's crazy. It's, I was, I'm reading this book called The Seven Habits of Effective People by Sean Covey. And 
it's interesting you mentioned that it's this top topic it's it's about first you have private victories and you have public victories mm. and you build on that foundation and and one of the second one of the fifth habits of public victory is win-win think win-win and, and people especially in chicago and it's a lot of it i don't want to say urban but like in the hood a lot of people have this crabs in the barrel mentality it's, yep and, and we see it in sports and we see it in law and we see it in like the, the justice system it's like i win you lose yeah you know and and it's like we take that to heart and we take that as an identity and we take that as like oh if i'm yeah. if he eating i ain't eating yeah you know what i'm saying if he if he winning if, if he on that i can't be on that yeah and it's like, like yeah. you excluded yourself out before you even attempted, attempted yeah you know, it's like you see a, you know, what I'm saying this girl you trying to holler at, and you say she's not gonna talk to, she don't give me time today. Yeah. You didn't even holler. Yeah, you, feel you don't me? even so, know. You don't even know, and it's like, and it, it's become normalized. That's the that's yeah. the scary thing to me. It's yes, like, it's not that like some people have. People are people more don't. comfortable to stay in their stay in their proverbial lanes. Stay in their proverbial lanes, and it's mm-hmm. like the solution is, oh no, let's move to win win because not only not only do we is that more is not only are you gonna win more for yourself. When you have that mentality, but also it's a habit. Once you nice. get in the habit of doing that, you know you're able to reach new levels. That the the win lose, even when like you win, you lose. That win is not even as big as like we all win win. Yeah, exactly. Because when we all win win, going back to what you said, you know what I'm saying you pulling. Okay, homeboy, good with the audio. Homegirl, you feel me? She know how to do makeup. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But when everybody is winning, everybody is able yeah. to. To come, come, come prepare. Come with their best version. Yeah, so I, that you're picking the pick of the litter. Exactly. So I it's feel like, like the best you'll be able I, to elevate to new statuses never before. Yeah, yeah. And I feel like the best ideas come from a, a true diverse group and a true diverse like foundation. Like if you have a bunch of yes men, if you have a bunch of singular thinking individuals, there's no progress because where's the sh- where's the steel sharpening? Who's sharpening my steel? Who's stealing my sharpening? If everybody can just be like, oh yeah, it's whatever you say. It's like, no, like you're supposed to be, what, what people don't uh, generally, and this is a generalized statement, so I'm not trying to say everybody, but when you get into, because we were talking about, like, you know, our community, it's like, we have these abilities to, you know, be so much more greater than we even see ourselves. It's like so many times I've sat down with individuals and they would casually tell me what they do. And I'm just like, what the, the fuck? Like, wait, what? You do what? What? Okay, like, okay, look, so I have this, you know, I need this. Um, what do you need so that we could utilize this? I'm straight into the yin and yang. Like, I'm trying to sit there and like, what well, I can look at you and tell you what I need from you. Can you look at me and tell me what you need from me? Like, let's build a, let's build a foundation where we're both growing as this shit is getting bigger and better. So now you know, like, damn, you know, when somebody win-win. When somebody is putting in their efforts towards somebody else's shit, but they also see the benefit for it in themselves, they 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 go harder. They go harder because it's like, damn, I can I can actually have effective change in something. I can actually be effective, you know, in something bigger than one singular person. Because tribe is not one person. I, you know, tribe is an a, 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 a entire tribe of people. No pun intended. <laughs> an entire tribe of people. Like, it's not one, it's not one person. So, it's crazy being in a city as, you know, beautiful as Chicago. Because Chicago is a very beautiful city. And just wondering why. Why are people so reluctant to you know be together it's like oh I'll fuck with you maybe for like 2.2 seconds you know see you mm. you know I I have my fix go back mm. you know and, and, <laughs> and it's, that's the thing about win win and it's like it, it, it's kind of a streets mentality yeah it's, and, it's, and it's like it's um it, it, people think it's weak 
that's the thing. I yeah. feel like people don't want to be with with. They don't want to sit there and put the work to help you out because then it, it takes away from. They think it they takes think. away from that. It's like oh oh if I win and he lose oh that's player yeah I finessed. That's the word that's oh he got finessed. I I, I, I actually had word. someone tell me I actually had someone tell me that um you know they you know they were helping they were helping out um you know with some stuff this was back in like 22nd and Halstead they were helping out with stuff at Tribe and one thing about us we always say like yo if you um if you're helping out if you're doing anything for us like yo utilize the space like we're we're working you know we want you to make sure you see what's around you see how you can you know benefit from this stuff and see how, how you can utilize all the things and assets that we have as well because we're utilizing your time your energy you know what i'm saying you get individuals that see that opportunity and they attack it with such precision they know exactly what they want they know exactly how they want to use it and they're pouring their blood sweat and tears in it but you also get the other side where it's like people are they come in with a different intent. They come in with like, okay, uh, because I'm doing this for you, like I'm expecting you to do this. But if we don't know, but they don't say it. They don't say it. It's more of a like an, an expectation, an entitlement. And what we try to, what we're trying to push forward is the actual social networking aspect. Don't hang around and think you're supposed to have something like communicate what you want so we know like yo this is how we can this is how you can be yourself this is how i can be myself this is how we get this is how we garner respect because whether it's win-win or win-lose you can take a loss if you're working towards something that you know oh maybe this wasn't my time to, this wasn't my thing to win on right now like you know what i'm saying but i see where this is going and i see how i can win from this situation you know what i'm saying it is always solutions now when you're thinking of solutions you're not really focused on the win-win or win-loss because you know they're supposed to come you're supposed to lose you're supposed to lose you know but how do you handle it you take the win-win you think you put out the reality you speak into existence win-win but also expect the loss too and how do you build off of that type of time? No, thanks for sharing that, you know, and it's a lot of times we got to come back to like this podcast. We rebranded it, you know, what I'm saying it's like, how do we help young men kind of get to that point? Yeah, because you mentioned in the off the record on the call yeah. we had, you said, correct me if I got the date wrong, but you said December 24th, 2016. Yeah. That's when you just went all in. Yeah. Why that date? You um, know, why, what? So, so how did you get to that point where you were confident that I'm doing this? Well, it it wasn't. It, uh, let me not lie and say it was a like. Oh, that day it was a confidence thing. I was working for a company as a senior data analyst, and I was the only black person in the office. Um, and you know, clerical and that you know administrative work that stuff gets super boring to me like it gets it's easy it's redundant it's like i would host uh, i would hold the meetings in the morning go over the numbers like you know tender like you know it, it was just very very so clerical. exactly but let me not act like the job was like oh blah blah, blah. amazing environment they'll sit there and like they'll give you all the benefits like they want you to sit but I realized that not only was I the only black person in the office, I was the only person under contract. Mm. So while everybody had job security, I, you know, I was getting evaluated like th three months in. And then it was like a full time position was like being like hung over my head. And then once that started happening, I'm like, oh. I got to make a plan after this, whether I get this job or not. Like, this is never what I wanted to do anyway. I felt like I was doing it because I wasn't trying to be broke. Like, you know what I'm saying? I wasn't even putting my craft first at that time. And um, I was making music, but it was all like more practice, 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 practice. I wanted my own sound. I stopped listening to people. I started, you know, 
honestly, I started becoming like super, just like, you know, introverted. Um, I, can't, I, can't I know, I know. And it was it was a point in time where I personally wasn't, you know, creatively myself. I was in a proverbial box. I was in the suburbs, too, at the time. So it was like once the job came, it was like December 24th was the last work day. It was like a Thursday or Friday or something. And they were talking to me and they said something about like, oh, once New Year's came back, we were going to have like an interview, sit down and interview. And I was just like, you know what? Like, you know, I appreciate even the consideration for an interview, but like, you know, I don't want to re-interview for another contract. I don't even want to, you know, re-interview for the job. Like, I, I think I'm cool. And I was working with Nike at the time too. Shout out to Nike, like as a project assistant on the marketing team. So... It was like I had a plan and I was just going to come to Chicago not knowing anybody and just focus on that plan. And that's what I did. Mm. No, thanks for sharing that. And I want to use that to kind of piggyback on like in your life, how how important has been the aspect of taking risks? Yeah, because that's a big it's, risk, huge risk. But but again, like it, coming like growing up, how I grew up, like nothing was ever it's not about it wasn't about comfortability you can't be comfortable when you're living in a city like new york and it's ever changing ever evolving there's so many people like you know i would be on the streets at like 11 o'clock at night sometimes in chicago and it it, it wouldn't be you know people outside Shit drive. you know like you'd be four o'clock in the morning Downtown. it's fucking four o'clock in the morning in new york city there's still hundreds of people out you know, and you don't know who, what, when, where. You don't know who is who. Like, you can't possibly, you know, no matter how long I've been in New York City, it's I, I can't possibly have fathom every single place that's in there. It's so much, you know, like I haven't been everywhere. You know, we live in New York. People in New York don't, who live in New York don't go to Times Square. Like, that was like a school trip. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was like a school trip for, for class or, like, whatever. Like, Times Square is not, you know, New York. But making it there and then transferring that to Chicago, the risk we, we the risk has always been life in New York. Like, if you can make it here, you can make it anywhere. You know what I'm saying? That And that's been the same attached to New York City for forever and a day. You know, shout out Frank Sinatra. You know, if you can make it here, you can make it anywhere. And taking a risk was more about me. Who am I taking a risk for? Like, I can't ever give my daughters anything that I want to if I'm not okay. I mean, I can't take care of my mom. I can't take care of my sister. I can't take care of my family. I can't take care of nothing if I can't take care of myself. So the risk wasn't really the issue. It was more about convincing everybody around me that I had to be selfish and take care of me before I could take care of anybody else. And I think that was the that was the bigger thing. Like telling everybody like, yo, I I know I, I know you want this and I know you need this and I know you deserve this. But in order for me to be able to do that, I have to do what I know how to do to make it. Like because if I'm doing this, it's it's gonna be miserable for me. I'll be it would be some like, it wouldn't be my life, you know? And then I, I'm not a miserable person. Like, I'm a happy ass. I'm a happy Always ass. Always I'm a happy ass person. So <laughs> I can't imagine just like, you know, and I did it. I put myself through it just to know that, yeah, this this corporate life is not what I'm, what I'm on. Like, you know, I'll use it. I'll use them. I definitely use the, the the abilities that I've had to work in corporate jobs to amass knowledge. I didn't I didn't just go there and just you know sit around like no I needed to know who was who. I was you know let me go hoop with this uh, uh, instead of going to go eat some fast food. Hey, let's go to the gym. So now I'm with the CEOs, with the project managers and stuff like that. Just socially networking. You don't know who who was who. You know what I'm saying? So. Risk factor, Chicago is too open. It's like what? It's too open so much for everybody. It's it's about actually applying it and letting everybody know around you 
that, hey, yo, this is what I'd have to do in order to take care of this. I'm saying. And it's like, there's two things I want to talk about. I just want to piggyback off of, like, the untapped. And I have a perfect analogy. I've been to New York twice, yeah. like three times, but like twice that I remember. Yeah. And it's like, from the experience I got there, to me, New York is like a gold mine. But it's like people at work. People, people, are, people are mining people that shit. People coming in with the drills. People, people are coming in with the... You know what I'm saying? You got the manager saying, oh, don't go over there. Go over there. You know, it's, it's organized. Oh, they, there's a gold mine. Yeah. It's, it's an even bigger gold <laughs> mine. But people working at it. People mining the resources. There's and my analogy of Chicago is, it's a, a, a slightly smaller gold mine, but niggas don't got no materials. Yeah. They don't got no, no pickaxes. They don't got no... Yeah. It, but it's full of gold, but it's like they don't got the materials here. It's like, man. And I wanted to mention that, but I do want to go back to... And I was like nodding like viciously because like I... Come, as having African ancestry, I yeah. love my African, I love my Senegalese side, yes. you know what I'm saying? They came over here, you know what I'm saying, trying to make a way. It was it was a time of like, you know what I'm saying, opportunity, you know, let's let's play it safe, let's be successful, yeah. but let's play it safe, you feel me? From what I hear with like this decision you made, you feel me like, you know, community, the tribe. My African side of me is like, what 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 was it like? Telling that to your and I'm yeah, not sure yeah, how yeah, your, yeah. your parents would take that, but how, how did your mom or like your your African side like kind of open up to that idea? A and, and B, how do we? How, what advice or what roadblock did you have to like? How, basically, what tools did you okay. use to like explain that to them? They, like, they don't understand the concept sometimes of like, listen, wait, wait, I know what I'm doing. Yeah, just, just wait. Yeah, they want it now. They like, I don't see it. It don't look successful because all they know is like that don't work. Yeah, so, but so, it's like, how did you like? Yeah, so. So, first of all, shout out to my mom because she, she's always been supportive. She's always wanted me to do something, but she's always been supportive. So, like, growing up, she wanted me to be a lawyer. So, um, my aunt, uh, my, my aunt's Tokumbo, she lived with us. And she went to John Jay College of Criminal Justice in New York. So, my mom would send me to school with her like eight, nine years old um, to these like law classes with her because that's what she wanted me to do. But I also loved music and she knew I loved music. Um, so she would, even though nobody was allowed to touch her CDs and stuff, she would, I would always have her CDs listening to the Fugees, you know, mm-hmm. Lauren Hill, Maybe Music you know. Soul Child, you know, Boyz II Men. Like, Boyz the Man all the damn time. Like, Michael Jackson all the damn time. You know what I'm saying? And she just knew, like, I, I had a love for music. And what she grew to understand, it was like, it was more of a compromise. I understand how I can make the music a business. When you're dealing with African parents and they, and they hear that you're doing music, they automatically think that you're trying to be a rapper which it's not anything wrong with, but they automatically think the worst because the imagery that they see is not the, the brainwash. The, it's not the it's not the brand marketing, the mechanics behind. They see the rappers with all the jewelry the and the blah blah, blah. Girls. and they're not they're not with none of that because they care about the family name. They care about the family image. Reputation. So it was about literally letting my mom listen to my music. You know, letting her know, like, where all this stuff is coming from, but also showing her how serious I'm taking it. She she challenged me. Oh, like, okay, well, I need this bill paid. And I was like, oh, it's Friday. Well, let's have a let's have a party. All these kids in school need a safe space. In high school, I was like, all these kids need a safe space to party. We have a huge ass place. We, their parents will know where they're going, blah, blah, whatever. So we would have house parties, dry house parties, of course, not like no liquor or anything. But in, in high school, that didn't even really matter because we were all athletes. We all, like, you know, it, it was lit just having an experience where it was just, like, girls yeah. and we could party, we could dance and, like, you know what I'm saying? And I used to, I was, I've been paying bills since I was 13 years old. And it wasn't because I had to. My mom just made me. And because she made me do this stuff, I took that information and applied it to what I wanted to do. 
which is what convinced her to just be more open-minded about me going into the music. It's like, well, you taught me all of this. So now you can't say that I can't apply this to what I want to apply it to. So, okay, you wanted me to do law? So I studied contract law. Now I'm never going to get screwed in the music industry, which could have happened on plenty of occasions with, about with me. You know what I'm saying? So really, really making them knowledgeable, but forcing it because African parents are not going. Okay. They know they know their ways. Oh, you don't want to you don't want to destroy our family name, blah, blah. It took a while for my uncle. My uncle would literally tell me you need to just get a job. And I was like, I was like, you don't even know what I do. I, was, I used to ask him, like, what is it that you think I do? He was like, you know, I see the parties online. Like, you're, you're too old. You have kids. And I'm just like, what? I'm like, you don't even know me. Like, you have to understand that, listen, if you're not going to um, do the research, then, then yeah, then you're just going to have to, you know, just take a step back and watch me. And now when he sees the business aspect and everything, he's, you know, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. You know, good job. Well done. Mm -hmm. But it's like, yo, what would have happened five years ago when your son was interested in, you know, the industry? When he's interested in like the music, he didn't have to be a rapper. We could have he could have helped us out with contract law. He could have helped us out with publishing. He could have helped us out with so many different aspects. But you just saw one way. And it's about making them knowledgeable. Oh, again, going back to what we said earlier, the unlearning and relearning. It's the same thing we got to do with our African parents. It's just we got to apply whatever they are trying because they want to they want to have <clears throat> like we all like we all want to have genuine roots in our children's lives. We don't want our children just like, you know, left to their vices if we're here. I know I don't. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want my daughters to know that I'm always here. Hit me up whenever. Like, let's talk. You know, you want to make music? You want to learn how to record? You want to do your own thing? Like, creativity is supposed to always be there. And, like, when you get around parents who just want to put their own, their own thing and, and not listen to the children, it's hard. But as a child, the advice, <clears throat> or as a, as, you know... As an artist or anything, trying to get their African parents to understand what's going on, apply what they're teaching you because they're not teaching you. You know, our, our parents are not trying to teach us anything wrong, especially no. our African parents. They they go. It's good intentions. Yeah, it's good intentions. But if you could apply that to where you're trying to go in the arts, they back it because it's about the passion. If they know that you're truly going to be dedicated to something, my mom, my mom did not understand like how why i love basketball so much until kids used to come to the door like every day like ken you know we have a game we have a game we have a, like you know and then she would come to the game she was like holy shit and then when a couple of my friends got drafted she was like wait what the? i'm like yeah this is like you know and she's like okay no all right take it serious you know what i'm saying it's like they have to see your work ethic if the work ethic is not there, if they just think you're trying to, you know, African parents, they're judgmental. Let them see you smoking weed. Ah, you know, let them see you smoking weed. Let them see let you them drinking. See with the girls. Let, let them see, see you with the girls. Like, yeah, you let know them what I'm you saying. Swear. You know what I'm saying? You know. <laughs> and, and it's like. But if you take taking care of home, help you pay your OG bills if you're sitting there out here making bread. And, they, and, and if they ever hollering at you and they need anything, like, take care of home. They really just want to make sure that they good. Like, you know, we're not sticking no African parents in no nursing home. No. That shit that, you know, so they know. They're trying to instill. They don't want us. They feel like the the the, the states, the, the American culture is going to de destroy our minds. But there's beauty in this culture as well as there's beauty in, like, our native culture. And, you know, when you get those parents that are really just open to being expansive, you know. My mom, she was in she was in the U.S. young, so I felt mm -hmm. like it was easy. That helped. I felt like it was easier, yeah. Because I know parents that literally kick motherfuckers out just because they had, you know, twist in their hair or something. Or braids or something, you know. Like, what? Let me, let me, let me catch my son, you feel me? You know? With the cornrows. With the cornrows, like, you know. 
and it's good. and it's like not nah, everything you said just resonated so deeply with me, and 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 I, and the thing is, what they really struggle with, you know, more so if if we look at the nature, I spent half my life in Africa, you know, it's tough, you know, what I'm saying it's it's you work, you get results, you mm-hmm. know, you work, it's it's input output, mm-hmm. you know, that's how it is. It's, it's you hungry, go to the market, mm-hmm. you know, there ain't no fridge. Oh, you got to get that fresh. Yeah, you gotta you gotta go fresh. You got to go to market every day. Like, oh, it's raining? Fresh. Guess what? We're going to find a way across this puddle, yeah. but we still going to get it. Yeah. Because little Timmy's crying. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Or, or uh, Afua's crying. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Or, or Kwame. You know what I'm saying? He needs some food. Yeah. So so it's like... You got to go get it. You got to go get it. And it's like, when it's good, it's good. Oh, it's, it's Tabaski. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know, so we celebrate it. We sacrifice in the goat. Now it's good. We chill. Yeah, we got the chilly, got the you know food, what I'm saying? Yeah. But but tomorrow we know what we gotta do. Yeah, you yeah, gotta yeah. roll. You gotta place. You know what I'm saying? It's the structure. It's the tribe. Yes, yeah, it's, it's the tribe. It's, the, it's, it's it's nobody by themselves. Yeah. I don't care what you're doing. Yeah. I don't care what you. You already do. know. We got we gotta eat. <laughs> I, I do care about your future, but it's it's how can it help the how, tribe? It's all yeah. about us. Because because that that is the foundation. That's that's how we got that. That's how we formed sustainability. Yeah, sustainability. Sustainability. They need to see. They need to see the principles behind what you're doing to even back it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, so I, like I said, I don't want to stick them. I don't want to be like, you know what I'm saying? Because I don't want to talk down. Because like you said, you take what's good out of it. Yeah. And there's a lot of good. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and that, that's what, you know what I'm saying? And that, that and it tying it back to, and, and just like, because it's a lot of parents, a lot of young parents out there. You know yeah. I mean? And I want to speak to them when they raise it. I don't have any kids. So, but just from my upbringing, if I did, it's just, like you said, it's like they, they, they almost... It's like they think that you're them. Yeah. You know? and, and it's and I understand that. You know what I'm saying? But it's the autobiographical yes. nature of it. And it's, it's like, like, oh, I didn't do this in life, so but so you have so to you do should, it. Or, it's or like, just, wait, time out. Wait, but you made it just fine. Like exactly. what do you mean? But what, what I wanna when I wanna never <laughs> cough it is it's like it's like you have to listen. Parents need to learn how to listen, but not from your experiences. Stop trying to say, yes. Oh, I had a time or shut the fuck up. Yeah. Just listen yeah. to what the kid is saying. Let them complain. They say, "Oh, mom, I want to, I want to drop out of school." Don't be like, "Oh, what's wrong?" Yeah. And then, then wonder why they don't want to talk to you if you dug into that. If this you is again, them, yeah. This is again why I say shout out to my mom because I feel like no matter what, even if she did not agree with my decision, she always expressed it, and then she would say, like, you know, okay, like, you know, let's see, let's see what happens. But if it's not hitting for this, then. You need to do this. It's like, all right, like I've, I told you what I want. So if, if you're going to try what you want, I'm going I'm to support you. But understand that if this don't work, if this not hitting, I already told you, like, you know, type deal. And so she's always been that supportive ear. And like, I always felt like my dad, my dad wasn't there. So like my mom always had an open door policy with all the kids. Like, you know, it doesn't matter what. You come to talk. And then I had aunts and uncles. Like, I, I, you know, we grew up never being raised by just one person. That's how I knew. So it was just like, you know, when my mom wasn't around, my sister was the oldest. So she was the authority. And then I was the authority to the younger. It was like literally a trickle down effect. Oldest, like yeah. age and all of that stuff really, it really, matters. really holds value. Like Respect in, every, in every way, shape or form. So I feel like having that understanding like and that structure it was easy to talk to my mom about like anything that i was Mm -hmm. going through or anything that i was experiencing or anything that i may need answers to because she was just so cool just like to be just to be straightforward like she was just so cool like she taught me so much like she taught me all of my like my Go get her ways. She taught me my mentality. She taught me the value of like saving. She told me she taught me the value. The she taught me the like the she taught me how like material shit is just like it, it ain't really shit. Like she would do the craziest stuff. Like my mom would go and like she would buy us a shit ton of stuff, right? And like she'd be like, oh, make sure y'all get your wares out of them. And it's like you know we're kids, like. 
if we, you know, I got the new pair of Jordans, I'm probably going to wear these Jordans until I, like, fuck them up. But I got seven pairs of sneakers that I'm not even wearing and all these clothes and stuff. And then she would just wake us up, like, on a Saturday. She'd be like, all right, back the clothes up. And then she would just go out and literally, like, give the clothes. It didn't matter if we didn't. It didn't matter if we wore them. Didn't matter if they were the sneakers were worn. Didn't matter whatever. She would just make us bag it up, and then she would make us go and give it up. And then she would just get us new shit. It was like we would we we wanted this stuff so bad, and these were my favorite sneakers until like yeah, well you didn't wear them. Now it's gonna be somebody else's favorite sneakers. You know you should have got your wears out of them. Like this stuff can be here today, and it can be gone tomorrow. Like right now we're good, but what if we're bad and we don't got nothing? Now, now the only stuff you have is the stuff that you've worn. All that new shit that you were trying to save and like, you know, hold on to because you want to. Nah, there's somebody who needs this. Like, it's not even in season anymore now. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you're not wearing these boots. All right. You're not wearing these sneakers. Oh, and she she didn't care. She did not care. And it just made us value so much more of what we were doing, so much more of what we were putting out. And when it trickled down to tribe, when it trickled down to community, when it tri trickled down to team building, you realize that everybody around in some way, shape or form has that mentality that supersedes themselves. They're trying to spread knowledge. They're trying to empower. They're trying to b build foundation and generational wealth. And that comes from our roots. So, like, you know, shout out to my mom, like, because I feel like she really, she really, you know, rooted me correctly. No, I'm just, like, processing that. Yeah. <laughs> no, I had to, like, that's just, that story of just, like, you know, if you don't use it, yeah. someone else going to use it, you yeah. feel me? And a lot of parents talk the talk, like, oh, you know, do the right I thing. I remember, she, I'd be, I'd be like, I didn't even win. So what? You'll get some other stuff. Like, and she would, it wasn't even like she would take the stuff away and then we'll go out on some like shopping spree. It wasn't like that. No, like she would literally, it was like a season. Like, you know, it was like, it was like a season. Like, you know, if it was summer, then she had bought us like a, like summer wardrobe. You know what I'm saying? So she would do a big summer thing for all of us. And then whatever we didn't wear or lightly wore, she just gave it away. So now we only had the stuff that was like the beat up shit. And then we had to wait till the next season to get what we was going to get. And it made us value like the stuff it made us keep even the stuff that we had. It made us uh, even it, it made us keep the sneakers cleaner. It made us, you know, value like collectible items like, oh, OK, cool. Well, there's something that I know that. I'm not going to give away if I want to collect these books or I want to collect these cards. This is something that I know I can hold on to. And it made me research more stuff. Like, what could I put my money into? Would, would you say this is a skill? Because the way my brain works, I'm making connections. Would you say this is a skill that made you so good at networking? Yeah. That made you so good at, I don't want to say talent scouting it, or seeing the value in but others? I feel like I feel like seeing the value in others. Because so many times when I be seeing people like, you know, people are Chelsea can attest is like, we be wondering like, why the hell is this person around? It's like, there's something about this person. You know, everybody has a purpose and it's not up to you to dictate somebody's existence uh, to you until they play their cards. So a genuine person will always be genuine. You won't even have to, you know, worry about that. But having these abilities like growing up, you know, with my mom and her being so transparent about so much stuff, it gave me the ability to see people in a different light. I see the good first and I, you know, scope out even if a person is not, you know, whatever. I'm just trying to see how they move. I'm trying to, you know, everybody deserves opportunity, but that's what also garners respect. Because if you don't separate like, ah, oh, this person is a shady person, like he's a hood nigga, like he's on dirt. Like, what you mean? I'm black. Like, I grew up in the hood. Like, what are you talking about? There's no there's no look or stereotype to a hood nigga. The cleanest motherfucker will sit there and hit a stain on you. It's about you sitting there being open to just, hey, yo, everybody has an opportunity to be themselves. And everybody has an opportunity to play their cards. So I think the aspect of, you know, getting to pay, like paying attention to and getting to, you know, assess people was 
what I got more from that experience. <coughs> Excuse me. Bless you. Man, this is so this this conversation <laughs> is so uh so <laughs> juicy. We ain't even fucking <laughs> let me let me I tap let, let me tap one of these. I've been, look, I've been looking at them apples. Oh, definitely. You yes. Bless the bottle? Yes. You feel me? We yes. got yes. Let's uh, bless the pink bottle. lady apple. Let's get it. Kombucha. Let's get the Everybody pink. in the room, before we bless the bottle. Um, oh, listen, yeah, no, it's pink. like, how dare we not? I want to try that yellow carrot. You feel me? The I amenities of the treehouse. I feel like a terrible host. But yeah, knock yourself out. We got beans, greens. <laughs> yes. So is, is this a yellow carrot? That is a yellow carrot. They're called rainbow carrots. Rainbow really? carrots. My favorite is the asparagus. I've mm. never had this. You want to pass your lady? You want some? Asparagus. You know what you <laughs> they know you're here. <laughs> Let's get the asparagus. Oh. This straight, you straight. One warning about the raw asparagus. It detoxes you. Okay. So it makes your pee smell interesting. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But it's detox, though. It's for a good reason. You gotta say, what's up, Doc? We... <laughs> what's up, Doc? What's up, Doc? <laughs> Bugs Bunny. I feel like these kids don't know about Bugs Bunny. Oh, no, yeah. Tom and Jerry. I feel like they don't know. Mm. Tom and Jerry. This is good. Gratitude. Yeah, it's, um... It's even better than last week. I think because it ferments. I think the longer you wait... It, it tastes better. Mm. No, but no. I want to go back to all of that. Let's do it. To the conversation of just like seeing the value in things, and also a lot of, and we we touched on this over the phone. A lot of young men, for whatever reason, either they've been rejected in their life, or they're bitter, or you know, they they, they build up walls. You know, they put up boundaries. You know, so they come in the rooms. And, and they don't express what's on their mind mm -hmm. or, or their friends mm -hmm. are socialized. How, how, how in your life have you, you know, or, or maybe it's something that, you know, just just through the environment you've been in, you've had it naturally. But what are what are ways you've overcome, I guess, the, the feelings of like, okay, I, this person's a CEO, I'm so-and-so. How do I break the ice? How, how, have you over, how have you gotten to the point of being so confident in the abilities of like the, of how important being able to socialize it is. I feel like first and foremost, creating the environment. So the safe space. So creating the safe space. Um, and just shout out to like the women in Chicago too, because that's primarily how the soul tribe, you know, carried its, you know, its energy throughout the city. Um, and I feel like it also helped with the social networking and breaking down the walls with the men. Mm -hmm. Because when you would come to the Soul Tribe, there would be this huge, you know, just like feminine energy in the room. Oh, it's a safe space. It's a, like, you know, so you would have guys that are just not used to this environment where these women are, they want to talk. They want to sit there and talk about their arts and their creative. They want to know what you do. They're trying to know who you are. Um, and it's something that, like you said, it truly is lost, um, in the men. It's like, there's this wall, like we got to be on guard. Like, you know what I'm saying? I got to be tough. Like it was weird for me to be happy. Like people were trying to fight me. People were trying to start stuff with us because it was like, why is this guy so happy? He's too happy. Why? Like, what's, what's he on over there? Like, and I'm, and I'm the type of guy that... I would sit there and pull up to your shit and be like, hey, what's up? Like, you know, it's all love. You know, let's let's drink. Let's talk. Like, I'm not trying to I'm not trying to have to look over my shoulders. It's like when you create an environment where everybody can be and you're not trying to separate people based off of like their characters, their demeanors, their, you know, social anxieties, because a lot of these people of have so anxiety. they don't know how to communicate. So create an environment where they can trial and error communicate and also have the ability to talk to these people. Don't create some free-for-all type shit, mm -hmm. but have the ability to talk to these people when shit is going wrong and pull them to the side like, hey, yo, so such and such, blah, 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 this and that, let's work on this. You know, we have to sit there and, and create these social 
networking events for individuals to be able to, you know, step out of that box. You know, too many times people are just guarded for no reason. They don't even know why. They want to come out and have fun. And I'll be like, yo, why you stepped out the house? Why are you angry? Facts. Some people will come from far just to come to the door be angry. with attitude. Not even knowing you about to see this rainbow ass chakra lady on the wall yeah. with lights and and just just vibes and like you know people will put like I've had multiple guys pull up to tribe with guns yeah and then they step they step inside I'm like yo oh damn it's not even that yeah it's not that it's this is not that environment we're on a different vibration you can that. go you can go tuck that up you go tuck that up yeah. <laughs> Type shit. But I believe, honestly, um, to answer the question, creating the the safe environments, creating the safe spaces um, where women can actually carry the brand. You know what I'm saying? You create these genuine outlets for women who have just like these crazy abilities just not, without the opportunities. They constantly have to work, you know, on a minor level where not. Nah, you're doing something crazy like this can be utilized i don't know no guys doing this mm. <laughs> what's up why, why, why was this so important because the tribe so so the tribe you know it's you know genuine opportunities yeah you know networking what what why is it important to put a tribe to make such a safe space for women well th- with the research that we've done being in chicago we realized why house parties and social networking events were either not cool anymore or it was just a a safe cookie cutter blueprint. So we would go everywhere and everything was the same. The one issue that we found was that the women who were coming to tribe for, you know, opportunities, they wanted to DJ, they wanted to host, they wanted to perform. They wanted to get their music heard on the social networking sites, the TV shows and stuff that we would have. And they wanted, to, they wanted a home. They couldn't. Like, there's a mentality where, oh, if I do something for you, then you have to do something for me. We wanted to completely destroy that. Um, we wanted to create a space where not only is it important for women to know that Um, There's a safe space for them to come and just be and and create. But there's also a space where, like, your abilities can be utilized and you can be empowered. You know, you can be empowered. Because at the end of the day, me and my brother, we've been doing this since 2010. And as stuff progresses, we progress as well. And we were raised by women. I have two daughters. You know what I'm saying? I'm, again, building this for the future. I have something that I know that I would proudly leave my daughters. I can't build a foundation of a safe space for women and not create a safe space for my daughters to inherit when they're old enough to, you know, be a part of what's going on. So that's why it's super important to instill that safe space, that genuine space for women. You know, because it has to be left to the next generation as well. It has to be a blueprint. I love love that you mentioned that. The reason I asked that question, because that's that's a principle. People say, oh, the podcast is like, you're focusing on young men. Yeah, it's to make young men better husbands. Mm -hmm. Make young men better brothers. Make young men better uncles, you know. And it's like, so often, there's this mentality, especially like in the rap scene, it's like, these H words ain't shit or so and so. It's like Vanessa. It's like, oh, she ain't giving you time. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, yeah. my thing is like, why Why does she have to like fuck you or do something like that for you to just like treat her like you would treat your bro? It's a, it's a, it's a trauma mentality. How do so we get like, young men out of that mentality where it's like she has to do a okay sexual be, favor for you? Hey, it's okay to be rejected. So the reality of it is we live in such a swipe culture now that it's, it's like, how dare you not think I look good? Or how dare you not want me? So it's like, instead of, I mean, I'm older. I'm 33, going 34. Like, Bless you. when when I was trying to talk to girls in, like, high school 
and even college, it's like, yo, niggas had to text. You know, if you had the T mail, you had to sit there and do the predictive text joints. You had to like if you were sitting there uh, holding up the minutes and shit. You had to wait till the night. You had to wait till like nine p.m. for the weekends. And, you know what I'm saying? Because so, you know you wanted to talk to this specific girl, and it's like you genuinely took your time to get to know somebody, and it was okay if there was likes and dislikes about this person because they were supposed to be themselves, and you were supposed to be you. But currently. We're in this swipe culture, so I could be swiping and I could meet somebody online and then it could be an amazing night and then she could say something or I could say something that just doesn't sit well and then the whole night is ruined and then it's like, oh, oh back to swiping. And it's like there's no real genuine, you know, want to get to know somebody. So it's like people are thinking just because they got the, well, women women or want Men who have this and that, da da da. da. So I got this and that. So they're so, all thoughts. So, so, they're so all yeah. Thoughts. So they that means they want me, and it's like, nah, that's not really what they're talking about. It's the same security that you want from your women, they want from you. So it's like, uh, I'm growing up, and in my head, I had to have a car, I had to have a house, I had to have money, I had to have, but. Again, I was raised by women who had their own car, house, money. So when I had the mentality growing up that I had to have my own car, house, blah, blah, I wanted to talk to women who had their own car. But that wasn't to disregard the women who didn't have that stuff. It's like I grew up just that was the stipulations put on me. That's your standards. And I feel like some guys have not had those standards instilled on them. So they feel like because of social media because of the swipe culture if i got the jewelry on if i you know if i got the pack if i got the money you know what i'm saying she if i got the gear me. she what else does she need i could it doesn't even matter like i i could i could take you out i could fly you out and that's the standard for certain men that are looking at women in just that that way it's not so even a, it's not even a want to get it's like I, I i remember having a conversation with like a group of my friends and i, I just love having a conversation with my guys and and we we had come to a consensus it was like four years ago mm-hmm. and it was like there should be no body around us with without purpose like there shouldn't be any men or women around us without purpose and that just shows the value of everybody so now if you start talking to somebody you even value talking to that person differently because you respect the work that you're doing and you also respect the person as an individual outside of the work that you're doing. It's not about, oh, this is what's convenient for me. Um, this is what feels right because this is what's accessible. You know, it's not like, ah, uh, back to the drawing board because, you know, our views didn't politically align. Like uh, uh, I connected with her on every single stuff, but you know, I remember to this day I haven't don't I haven't spoken to somebody in three years because I was a Kanye West fan. <laughs> like because I I you know I supported Kanye. I can't even remember what the conversation was about. It was just like a Kanye support. What you like Kanye? Oh, he's crazy. I was like, oh, I don't know the guy personally. Like, from what I know, I followed his music in New York, you know, out here. Like, I actually appreciate Kanye differently, you know, but she was not having any of it. And I, last time I ever spoke to her, because I was a Kanye supporter. But that's the, <laughs> you know, yeah. people people don't even care to actually listen to your viewpoints. And we just got to break, we got to break that mentality. It's like, Come as you are. Create these environments where individualism matters. Because everybody is supposed to have a purpose in the tribe. And I feel like that point cannot be missed. It's not one singular person doing anything. And you're talking about going to go and get the food in the marketplace. Hey, it may have been your turn this time. It may have been this person that turn. Maybe you guys may have to go as a group. You guys, it's everybody working. Like everybody works, everybody mm-hmm. eats. Ain't nobody you taller, sitting. so you do this. Yeah, and you shorter, so you do that. But yeah. we all family though. No yeah. one's better. It's just that you use your skills to you know. Yeah. Say, oh, he's good at math. 
He yeah. gonna be the math teacher, but we still gonna she cooks, but we all equal. Yeah. At that ceremony, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That the queen mother, she the one who really run the show. Yeah. So it's like it's it's the structure, you know, and it's like I appreciate you mentioning that because it's just it's like people either have no standards or they have rigid standards. Yeah. And you said something that's crazy that that we didn't really tap on, mm. which was the the private one. Private victories. Private victories. Public victories. Private victories. Um, I feel like that is what that is what is missing. needs to be the focus. That is what needs to be the focus. Everybody is worried about who sees them, how they're seen. Nobody is trying to do that. You know, like, yo, just take a step away from that. Not nobody, but like a people... Few. People are not, they're less receptive to taking a step back from the social aspect and being like, yo, I can put my stuff out tastefully socially and I can build for these private victories within. Like if my team is winning and we'll be able to take care of our stuff, that's that's a that's a victory to me. Like I'm able to sit there and like go through everything, keep keep the wins and losses internally because the worst thing that could happen is, you know, you know, it's good when people know your wins, right? But is it really good when people know your losses? People are weaponizing your your downfalls. People are looking at things in a different way. And you need to understand keeping stuff and building stuff in-house before it's put out, before it's like the public, put out for public consumption is the way we have to sit there and really start feeding into that. And that's why, like, you know, individuals like Chelsea is, like, we get into these modes where we're talking about how we're going how we're gonna to put this stuff out, how we're going to sit there and, and get people to be receptive of what we're doing, how we're going to sit there and, like, get our people to look at what we've been giving them in the elevated light that we're trying to bring them like we're not trying to sit there and be like oh they changed it's like no we're giving everybody the tools to to be a part of this you know you know Lexi bring your book I didn't even know she was an author you know c- come through now people are reading reading this book people like, what the hell like yo this is dope you know we got an event 420 yeah come come bring your books you know let motherfuckers see you know, we want to empower. We want to sit there and make it cool to empower. We want to make it cool to sit there and like be selfless. It's okay to help somebody out and hey, get the win later. Take that private win. Or maybe the win is that you you don't change somebody's whole existence. Exactly. Maybe the win is that you move past the point where you need the win now. You know? This shit is crunchy as well. It's so good. <laughs> That's gonna be ASMR for mm-hmm. my for my my diehard treehouse fans. <laughs> they be listening, they be Ooh, that mm-hmm. sounds good. No. My anxiety disappeared. <laughs> oh, this shit is amazing. Um, that's beautiful. I, I love that you mentioned that. I do wanna tap back into the safe space. Yeah. You know? Safe space, right? But how long have you been doing a treehouse? I'm talking about um, treehouse. Yeah. Tribe. So tribe house. The actual concept of Tribe House started in 2017. Mm-hmm. So since 2017. Like events? Yeah. Okay. So it's 2022, yeah. right? That's the almost five years, yeah. going on six years maybe, right? Yeah, yeah. So you've probably seen a lot of highs, a lot of lows. Yes, you yes. know what I'm saying? Yes. Man, I don't know if you've heard of the Bantu Fest. Yes. Yeah, it was a... So my brother-in-law, he's a huge event. He does yeah. a festival. So so he understands, you know what I'm saying, dealing with people. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, he's, he's, he's like you, like super networking, really that guy, you know, he knows how to talk, he knows how to... But even then, it's, it's complications. It's mm-hmm. dealing with people. Of course, of course. How, how have you... And, and I love how you mentioned, like, you always keep a smile on your face. Like you, you look at the good in people. How have you, at your age and all this stuff, how do you <laughs> continue to, like, see the good in people and keep a smile... And, and I'm sure you've seen a lot of bullshit. Yeah. And you know what I'm saying? How do you continue to like keep that positive outlook? Yeah. That it's, glass out full? It's um I mean it's staying true to yourself. Like when you realize that you are in control of your reality, then 
you know, it's not like it's not like you know stuff can't affect you. Of course, things affect you. Of course, you know, you see, you get these negatives that come. But remember, like we were talking earlier, you have to expect that. So it just can't be good, 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 good. Like, you know, that is what we want to put out into the universe. But you expect that these teaching moments that you would rather happen early on in your existence happen early on as opposed to it being later on where you've never dealt with it and it's something on a grander scale. You know, so it's again, making sure that we create forms where dialogue is is just like one of the most conveyed things. It's like, I need to voice my opinion, but you also need to voice your opinion. It doesn't matter if we agree or not, is as long as we're able to communicate and talk. So any of the negative stuff that comes ab about, we as a team, as a group of individuals who singularly have our own thoughts, we're able to have conversation about these things. And everybody gives their own thought. Like, we're not surrounded by yes men. Yes, women. We're not surrounded by any of that. Like, we have powerful minds around us to keep us in check, keep us grounded, keep us, like, on our toes professionally. Because there's times where I want to step out of body because of some of the craziest cra things that people have said to me. Like, people would ask me as a black owner, but would never ask, like, a, you know, like a white owner. And, or they things that they, they, they would expect from me just because I'm a black owner, you know, so it's a it's a lot of it's a lot of things that we have to deal with. But you see the bigger picture. You could sit there and attack this this way and then somebody could see something. And now it's and now that's the narrative of you. You know what I'm saying? It's about keeping your composure professionally, but also being able to articulate what the, what the fuck it is, especially in your reality, my environment. This is what it is. You know what I'm saying? I step out and I have to adjust to the energies that is from everywhere. But if I can focus on creating that safe space here, if I can cr focus on creating that open forum and open dialogue forum here where people are truly able to be themselves and socially network without like, oh, why are you this way? Why are you that way? It's like, hey, well, at least this guy's consistent. At least this lady's consistent. Like, you know what I'm saying? You take the good and bad with that. You expect it. So it's almost removing all these I don't want to call them always unrealistic, but these expectations in general, like things should go this way in this idealistic, perfect world. It's okay. Listen, in life, good things happen, bad things happen. Exactly. But the bad things are teachable lessons. moments. Yeah. I love how you say teachable moments. Yeah, the teachable moments because, you know, you want to sit there and be like, you know, oh, this happened and we weren't even thinking about this. Now, this is how we put stuff into place so that this never happens again. And that's what we utilize it as. We don't we don't want to harp on anything to the point where it's like now we're internalizing and now we're going to start generalizing this concept and attributing it to everybody. Like everybody's like this. It's like, no, no, no. Now we know. Now we know what to say. Now we know how to come. Now we know how, what to put in place so that people know right off rip. Don't get don't try to minim minimize the um the opportunities for people to disrupt your peace so that when it comes few and far between, it's like, oh, okay, well, you know, have a great day. Blessings, mm -hmm. you know? And even if you're mad, it's like, you bounce that energy off the people in your tribe that can absorb that energy mm -hmm. and recycle that energy with good energy mm -hmm. instead of publicly speaking about it, publicly talking about it, Publicly, with unknown energy with unknown energies because you don't know people's intention. But when you have genuine, when you have your tribe around you, now you're able to be vulnerable and you're able to get that whatever off. So it's like I could like the craziest shit could be said to me, and I could be like, 
<laughs> no, nah, like, you know, I'll just yeah, shake your head like, no, nah, you know, whatever. But when I'm sitting there with my people, I'm like, can you believe this shit? Like, this motherfucker, like, what? Mm. You know? Because they can take it. They, and, yeah. And you take theirs. Exactly, yeah. It's yeah, it's, it's literally, and, and but it's like, imagine having people around you that's willing to listen but recycle with good energy it's like even if we're talking about something negative we're talking about something negative with solution we're talking about something negative with clarity they're talking about something ne negative looking at it from a different Teachable perspective moments. Like, oh, yeah, well, can you see why? And I don't know, like, we do that with each other because it's a genuine love for the peace that we're, you know, we're garnering there. Like, I'm a, I'm a hippie. Like, I'm a hippie. And, like, peace to me is... <clears throat> that is A1. If, I, if I'm peaceful, I know the environment's peaceful. There's nothing that can disrupt my peace. I could, I could bounce my energies off of the people around me that I know will recycle it with peace and vice versa. You know? And that's that's beautiful. I do want to touch on that like so it's like once you have that tribe, you know, then you can recycle the energies and then yeah. you can move, you know, in public settings. Yeah, you, you can know, move accordingly. Finesse more accordingly, you know. But it's like finding that tribe. Well, what was the process of like how how oh do people because there's a lot of young men who like oh okay yeah that sounds goodness. all good but like I got you feel me yeah I got uh Pookie it's, and Ray Ray it's not as my homeboys you feel it's me not easy like, and it's like, how do you like it's not easy do I tell them like you know do I ghost them it's like how do people build that new circle oh, oh okay I and I and I and I I appreciate that you asked this because this is something that's imperative to groups and. I feel like I feel like if this is not something that is known through through the gate when starting to like you know starting the collective, like it's gonna muddy the waters going forward. Stop building groups with individuals who aren't truly progressive. What um, do you mean by progressive? And seeing more out of what is going on in a collective as opposed to what they can get out of it for themselves. Like, you know, I'm going to use these people until I can't use them anymore. And then I'm going to hop to the next group. Or I'm going to, or, and then now all the stuff that we done internalized with our people. Brain drain. Now, so now it's in some other group. And it's like, it's, it's a weird sense of just like, where's the loyalty? And that's what's, we you know we're trying to f find if you're if you're gonna build a collective look for individuals who are progressively thinking about the future who can literally see something outside of themselves that they are building for you know what i'm saying like no matter what i came out to chicago as an artist and i was performing and everything and i just met a couple of artists and i was just like yo these guys i could sit there and like put what I got going on and this art into this artist and now we have two or three of us doing this, working at this level. And then it started building from there. And it's like literally taking a step back from yourself to throw the oop. Pass the assist. Make yourself an asset and not a liability. Stop building these collectives with people who don't think about the future who don't who who are ready to die tomorrow no that doesn't that doesn't help like that like who 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 nothing are just to lose. nothing to, no no we we need people who like are thinkers builders planters growers like those individuals understand that shit takes time like these things take time there's seasons to this and you want to sit there and look at your story and see the progression. So kind of piggyback of what you said, like how hard was it? Man, we, we've we been through so many different phases. We've been through the phase where everybody and their mama could say tribe, but then people abused that. And then it was like weirdos 
that and what I mean by that is like people who literally are with bad bad intentions like they're not around for any they're not around to progress they're not around to grow they're just around to you know peep the scene see where they could get parasites yeah where the ladies at you know where the liquor at and it's like, yo, like, you know, there's so much more there. We have Wellness Wednesdays, man. It's like, yo. Don't show up to Wellness Wednesday. It's like, yo, look, listen, listen, listen. I, I have to say this. I have to say this because this was on my head. So um, this has been on my head. So somebody had, somebody had hit me up and they were like, hey, man, you know, uh, I'm pulling up the tribe, you know, uh, you know, let everybody know I got the pack. And I took that as the most disrespectful shit ever. Like, first of all, you know, you ain't even say what's up. You ain't even check how Tribe doing. You didn't check how the business going. You ain't even check out. My, you don't even know how my business is running. And you think you could just pull up to my place of business with the pack. And then tell me to set to tell people that that you got the pack. I'm like, what, bro? What do you think this is? Like, I'm I'm a grown man. Like I'm a like I'm a father. Like I'm a businessman. Like this is an actual business. This is not this is not you know like the homie pull up spot. Like we cool and all, you know what I'm saying? But like this not that. There's people in here that are actually put in stuff in place for us to legitly run a, a platform for our community. And you think that it's pull up with the pack and send me to tell people that you, I'm like, come on. We got to get out of that. Stop trying to build with people like that. They don't even check how you doing, but they want to, they want to use what you have, you know? And it's just something that, weighs on my mind when I when I go through these phases with all these people that we we've been, you know, connected with. It's always been love. It's always been genuine. It's always been like, yo, how can we build, build, build? That doesn't mean everybody that comes has the intentions. Good intentions. But you never close the doors on anybody until they show their hands. Mm. You never close the door. Like you don't know. Somebody may come with bad intentions and just completely do a, a, a you know 180 and who's to say that you should be the judge and jury on that so things take time you know what i'm saying something may start out ugly and grow into something beautiful something may start out small and grow into something big and it may start and may not finish but you have to give it time for it so you know Say I say that to say like we didn't we didn't the people out building a collective is not a, it's nowhere near easy, nowhere near easy. It's not supposed to be something that everybody has access to, and I think we learned that through the stages because initially it was just like, yo, we want everybody, everybody yelling tribe and we still do but now we want it in a different we want it in people to know the right people why they're, try, right. we want we want people to know why that if you're yelling tribe you have the ability to yell tribe with your dope ass you know dope ass membership cards and shit mm. that way real well so you fuck with tribe you really believe in the progress of this okay show us privately we don't need we don't need to mm. You don't need to publicly no we're not even a public company. We we're grown within and then we're reaching out to the public f with our platform. But we want it to be valued. We want it to be sustainable. We want it to be like, you know, respected as the black owned and black ran business that it is. You know? No, that's powerful, man. People need to young men need to hear this. People starting things need to hear this, you know. It's just not. It's like it's not plant a seed, you know, and don't give it no goddamn sunlight. Yeah, no and don't water. Don't give it no fertilizer. No. Give it no water, and then keep right. checking it for two seconds. Did it grow yet? Did it grow Did it yet? Grow yet? Nigga, no. A seed grows once you foster it, you invest in it, 
And what's the biggest thing? If it's an oak tree, it might take years before yeah, it even comes out the ground. Yeah. What do they do? They build roots, the network. The whole oak tree will have a whole network before it even, even starts up. sprouting up. Yeah. So that's the thing. It's the network. They Trying don't pay attention this. to the yeah. network. They just pay attention. So I don't want to say the net worth of like the face value of things. Mm. That's what they focus on. But I do want to touch on two more points. I do want to touch on, there's a lot of people, you know what I'm saying? A lot of kings out here, a lot of queens out here doing their thing. You know yes. what I'm saying? Um, it's been a year. Treehouse, about a year. I'm, so I, I'm in this category. Um, but, you know, especially in, in the event space, organizing, you know, stuff like that. There, it's very easy to get lost in the sauce. Yeah, yeah. If you know what I mean. Yes, I've been, yes. I, I, I've seen it. it hasn't happened to me, but I've seen it happen, yeah. and it's like, and it's like, it's no expiration date. It can happen anytime. How have you avoided like the common pitfalls? I've seen guys go to get lost in the sauce, like drug wise. Yeah, I've seen people get lost in the sauce with the girls. They start yeah. doing too much. That yeah. reputation now fucked up because you know. So it's like, how have you? I'm sure you've been tested. I'm sure yeah. there's been a lot of temptation. Yeah. I'm sure there's been a lot of all of that. How have you been able to stay true to your purpose? In the midst of, we live in a big city. Yeah. In the midst of all this temptations and like, you know, things that could pull you. Yeah, off I, feel, your- I feel like, again, having that tribe of individuals who check energies. It's like, if if anybody sees any one of, like, if any of us, we see anybody acting out of line. Da, 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 and what I mean by that is like, we know what, we know how we are. We've been around each other long enough to know who we are and we're still learning but we we know how we we're protective of our public image we're protective of how you know people see us what people say so it's it's a respect thing when anybody on the team can come and check the energies of the other team members you have a different respect and it's actually pretty easy now Mm. to stay away from it because there's a lot more foundation in what we're doing um but I mean, 43rd and Princeton, I would be lying if I was saying that it was easy. It was like the ratio of women to men were like seven to one. Damn. Yeah, it was insane. So that's why we never had any fights. That's why the guys weren't bringing guns. That's why there was different gangs in there, black, white, Hispanic, Asian, Indian. And it was always fun because you walked into a very multicultural room that was a lot of, you know, feminine energy. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, of, of course, you know, in the early stages when you're building stuff, you realize um, how the public affects uh, the perception of that. Like, you know, I feel like we were very, very public at one point in time. And we've structured an actual team and we... You know, we're more concerned about the private victories mm-hmm. as opposed to the public. So it's easy. Like, people have to come to Tribe House. It's not that we don't go out to other places, but, like, you're not going to catch us at the bar. You're not going to catch us at the club. Um, and if we do go to any of those things, it's a very special occasion. Like, I was just at the promontory mm-hmm. um, for King Penrose's birthday. Oh, wow. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Birthday celebration. But before that, I and been out <laughs> you know you know I don't go out to the clubs and bar so it's easy easier now um but when we were going out when we were going all over the place it, I, I don't know it's just about you keeping your own focus how do you stay away from like feminine energy when you create a safe space for feminine energy yeah it's also about Always making that stuff professional. But having women in power too mm. saves a lot. Having women in power saves a lot. Because I can tell you plenty of times, like I was supposed to have interviews with women for certain things. And like the way they came just wasn't, you know. But, oh, hold on. But because we have women in power, it's like, hey, yo, Chelsea, hey, hey. You know, you come handle it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. She or she the one who created the policy. She, who knows it better than her? Mm-hmm. So it, it curbs um temptation, it curbs distraction where you have when you have an actual team that's just not, you know, a group of guys thinking that they're gonna operate in a city that's, you know, that has more women than men. So 
Artist? Chicago? No, no, not artists. I'm just saying, oh, okay. like, in, in just terms of just, like, the population. Mm-hmm. There's a lot more. I mean, the Soul Tribe has just been around more women build it, w- women builders than the men builders. Like, we have a group of men on our team that have been in here, like, you know, hitting the ground since 2010. Mm-hmm. But when we're talking about progress and stuff, it's key. It's key to have women sitting at the helm of the you know the organization because it protects you it protects you as a black man in this Mm -hmm. industry um especially when you don't want the distraction Mm -hmm. especially when you're not looking for the distraction when you're just trying to be happy and not have to adjust your energy just because i'm happy doesn't mean you know i want you just because i'm smiling all the time and uh you know like I'm embraced, like you know, it's an embrace. Doesn't mean like it's anything more than that. Mm. And having a like a, a truly like cohesive group of people to check everybody's energies, check things, and like structure how we all move. I think that helps. You know, it's about the team you keep. Because if it's a free for all and everybody do whatever, cool. I don't hang around people who do drugs. So there's no reason for me to fall victim to it because let me try to do some shit, motherfuckers. Be like, what the? F-? They'll look at me like, like, like you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Boy, it's not. Right. E- it's not even like a judgmental thing. It's a more like, no, nah, we got shit to do. Like, nah, we got shit to do. You know what I'm saying? We, you know, I'm we're, sharp as iron. We're chill. Yeah, yeah, we're we're chill. You know, give me a drink. You know, you know, four twenty friendly. That's mm. cool. That's 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 enough for me. <laughs> like, a little acid here and there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, yeah. I definitely, saw definitely, yeah, definitely, you know definitely, without a doubt, without a doubt. You know, mm-hmm. but yeah, you know, there's no there's it's a whole I, world yeah. having having that team keeps a lot of that stuff. They check your energies, man. They're not going for anything disrupting what we have going on. It's like, yo, we have work to do. This would be a distraction. And we gonna call like we call each other out on stuff. You know, so that's why I respect it's out of love. I respect cause and, and we know as I respect the all the individuals around me in this small circle that we have, because if they are speaking on anything even if they know it's difficult for them to like speak on it, they're going to speak on it. They're going to voice their opinion because they know it matters. And that's, you know, that's how we stay away from all that other, all that other outside noise, man. We keep this shit private. Private victories. Private victories. Cheers to that. Cheers. I love that. I'm just curious. Like the last question I have is, um, you said, I forgot the date, but in 2010, correct me if the date is wrong, but you, or when you, I don't know the exact date, but you said there's a point where you had an opportunity to go to CUNY University? Oh, no, no, Milliken. 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 So that was 2007. 2007. 2007. So you got the opportunity, then you got the news that you're about to be a father. Yeah. Right. So, So, no, 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 no. Or I'm tweaking. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, 2007, I had applied for you know, certain colleges and I had gotten a scholarship from mm. Milliken University. Um, which I wanted to go to, but then it was in Milwaukee and it was in some rural area and I'm just like, Yeah, nah, it's not like just, right. I'm trying to get out of this. Like, I can't go to Milliken. Um uh some years later so I ended up going to Harper College. Mm. Uh some years later my cousin Benga in New York was like, yo, you know, let's get a place out there. Because I have been talking to him about, like, how I just needed to get out of the suburbs. And I didn't go to Chicago, which I regret. I didn't go to Chicago because there was this perception of Chicago that, like, terrified my family. Like, I really didn't even care. But my mom was just like... Especially in Africa. Yeah, like, no, like, you know, you're too... She was telling me, you're too different. You're too this, you're too that. And I'm just like... So, like, you know what I'm saying? So I was going to go back to CUNY. Okay. So the question I, I have with that is, how do you think your life would have played out if that worked out? Because you were super excited about yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, I was, I was. At the time. I was so excited about it. And if I can honestly tell you. How do you think your life um, would have played out now at 33 if you just took that route? What do I, you think? I could honestly, and this is, this is. 
genuinely, genuinely my thoughts on this. It's not something that I've ever actually put into thought. Um, I may have, you know, I may have been like, maybe when it first happened and I first found out I was going to be a father, I had had all my stuff like being sent over there. You know, mm-hmm. we had planned with my cousin, like, all right, cool, how long I was going to be. Or I would say, is... like, if, you, if, you, if the child didn't happen. No, no, just that's what I'm you. saying. Right, I, right. I haven't, I, I specifically haven't really put any thought into it because the child, mm-hmm. like, the child did happen. So it's exactly. like, to sit there and think about it, like, there's an alternate reality, mm-hmm. blah, 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 whatever. But no, my reality is the fact that I had two daughters. So, like, you know, I wasn't supposed to go. But in some other reality, maybe that was the that that was that that paradigm. That was that shift, and that you know that's happening somewhere else. But in my reality, that it wasn't you know something I was supposed to do. I don't really harp on the the uh, the far past too much because I'm progressive in my thoughts, how I am. Like I'm willing to learn and and be better. So. The fact that I became a father, I feel like it made me a better person. I was living for self. So all the decisions that I was making before I found out I was going to be a father, I was like, yeah, you know, I was doing all the shit for me. You know, college was cool until college wasn't free anymore. And then I was like, yeah, I'm not about to be in debt. Like, if my mom wanted me to go. She wanted me. I'm like, no. I, my sister just finished college, masters, everything. Brilliant. You know, all this debt she's paying off. And she's got an amazing, you know, position. Blah, blah. I'm like, yeah, nah, that's that's cool. More power to you. Like, this was this is my reality. So me not going to CUNY is like, uh, shit wasn't supposed to happen. You know, type deal. No, that's beautiful. I, the reason the only reason I bring it up is because oftentimes something like that happens and then a lot of people like ponder like, man, if only And know, especially so-and-so. because I had so many opportunities to Go. I had so many opportunities to go back before, you know, even before any of that, like before mm-hmm. any of that. So it's like to think about to I would think about something completely different before I thought about actually leaving. It's like so many different things, so many different variables would have had to change for me to actually have went after mm. the fact, you know, or not even be in that situation. It's like, yeah, I don't know. Just progressive. Yeah. I felt like I was ready too, by the way. Like I didn't, mm. fi- I, I didn't think I had enough time um, when I found out, but I felt like I was ready. Like, you know, my mother was just like, oh yeah, you better take care of your, you know, you know how Africans are. Period. You better nah. take care of that damn child. Exactly. Like, you know what I'm saying? No question. Uh, no question. I don't care what's going on. Your child, <laughs> and then uh, speaking about that is like a lot of people. They they're doing some stuff. You feel me? They aspiring artists. You know they on their path. Then yeah. they have a kid, and it's like their whole life change. But it's like in your case, and correct me if I'm wrong. It seems like you say you started the actual event thing in 2017. Yeah. Yeah. So you had already had it. No, change. no, I've been I've been doing events for forever. But I'm talking oh, about okay. in Chicago. Oh, because okay. I didn't know anybody in Chicago. I came out here to Chicago like not knowing anybody. Okay. So I had been doing uh, events. I just even I I remember even having an event in Chicago. I didn't even live in here. I had an event at a space out out west in the West Loop called Silent Funny. It's like a huge mm. warehouse. Uh, my home uh, my homeboy Carrick Carrick McFarlane, like you know, dope ass world renowned artist now, um, was doing stuff with Columbia. Um, oh no, the Art Institute. One of the oh, two. Okay. I can't remember. Yeah, it was one right of the there. two. Um, but he was, you know, he was doing stuff. So he had a huge show. He had made a connection with us at Silent Funny. And then we d- threw this huge concert in there. And I remember this shit like it was yesterday. We had pulled up. I had pulled in this Mercedes Benz inside the what fucking happened? warehouse. And then I was raffling off Supreme foam yes. posits, hats. We had put a stage in there. Like my friend had worked at Jewel, so we had like hella bottles. Like it was, it, it was insane. And you know, I just remember like you know those those genuine experiences. Not even having to, not even having to be in Chicago, yeah, mm-hmm. but still able to like you know make 
make some type of noise with the event scene. So like when we came out here, I feel like I yeah, was... Yeah, how is that with, like with your daughter too? Like, because you we communicate on the phone. Like she knows that you yeah. make music. She knows the... Oh, she makes music too. She's cold. I saw that. Song and her sister, her sister, uh, so Amaya, she, um, right now we're teaching her production, engineering, recording. She also wants to make music and we're doing the same thing with Brooklyn. So we're... And it's not forced. Like, it's something that they want to do. Like, my life as an artist has never been hidden from uh, my children. Like, I remember Brooklyn on the radio when she was, like, t- three years old. Like, one in the sing. And she sang an Usher song. It's the funniest thing. that like, spotlight, big stage. <laughs> Because said, she used to, said, yeah, they, because they she used to hear me singing "Superstar" all the time. So when she got on the radio, but but she's like, "I want to sing," and she sang that Usher song, and it was like so funny and cute. But then she ended up making a song that's like legit cold, and it's being streamed all over the world. Like it's in different parts of the world mm. right now. It's insane. Do you ever think like I don't have kids yet? But do you ever think like seeing all the bullshit you've been through and like the the challenges that you've been through to get to where you are? Do you ever find yourself as a parent like wanting to shield her away from that? But also knowing that that's what's going to make her Yes, the yes and no. So like, it's like, I, I feel like I want to make sure that my daughters have a safety net. So like if they do try something and they fail, they have the ability to try something new. Like some people take failure very very wrong and even you see it in little kids like Mm -hmm. you see it when like kids are playing games and like if one person wins and one person loses you see how they take it and what you want to uh create as a parent it's like an environment where your child understands that yo enjoy the wins but understand that the losses are going to come as well so they understand you know the environment that i'm in they've seen the progressive nature they've seen every stage like it's hasn't been hidden from them at all anything i do i do and if i can incorporate them i'll incorporate them like yesterday i like i said i performed for the first time and on a showcase for three years uh in three years and i opened up with a song that was like dedicated to my daughters which is our favorite song it was a john mayer song called stop this train and I, that's the song I opened up with because it was like, you know, it's our it's our song. You know what I'm saying? Type deal. And it's the motivation that I have to sit there and create this again, this safe space. I'm putting it into existence by practicing it in life right now. So by the time mm-hmm. they get older, it's nothing that they have to do. It's more or less plug and plug and play. They've been watching what I'm doing. Like, you know, they're going to sit there and handle this. You know, I have sisters. I have nieces. I have, Like, there's so many powerful seeds that we have in our family. And we're just trying to have something to be like, yeah, you know, if you guys want to step into this, this realm, this artistic realm, there's so many different avenues. But we have this. You know, you don't have to start from square one. Where, what are your abilities? How can we utilize them? How can we utilize them in tribe? How can we have that one-stop shop? You know, and, you know, the exposure. When children know that their minds aren't jaded and their minds aren't being suppressed and they can be as creative as they want, possibilities are endless. Like, you know, their train of thought, you can see how mature their train of thought is because they think differently. They have different accesses to things, you know? And they say, I was listening to this inspirational video, they say, it's not the sky is the limit, it's the sky is the starting point. The sky is the starting point. You know? And this was beautiful. This was beautiful. Yes. We, we gotta end it here. This was this was beautiful. And yes. I'm so thankful, you know, I love the concept of a one-stop shop. I love yeah. the concept of each one teach one. I love the concept of a safe space. Yeah. You know, these are concepts that I want to hear. I want to see that become an anthem. I want to see that become, you know, in the fabric of, you know, pop culture, in the fabric of what's, what's the word. I want to, I want these words to be omnipresent so that, like you said, it becomes a ritual. It becomes instinct. Yeah. Like you said, it's plug and play. They don't have to, like, worry about that. 
You know how you like, yeah. oh, I don't got to worry about looking over my shoulder. Yeah. How, how, why can't we all feel like that all yeah. the time? And I feel like it's possible with, you know, visionaries and pioneers doing what you're doing. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I applaud you so much, Thank you. you know, for coming here and speaking genuinely and authentically. And yeah, I feel this like has been dope, man. This has been fucking dope. This has been fucking amazing. I, 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 I ate a rainbow carrot. You know what I'm saying? Who would have thought? Who would have thought? <laughs> Who would have thought, you know? And yeah, that crunch. With that being said, you know, thank you for coming. And um, what are ways people can reach out, people can support the Tribe House, A, yes. and B? What are some new things you all are working on? And what are the things we can get excited, you know, for the Tribe House? Yes. Yeah, so please, if you guys are looking for, you know, creative ways to just artistically expand your mind, you know, grow within the artistic community that has genuine platforms. Make sure you tap into us socially. You can look us up at, you know, underscore the Soul Tribe and Tribe House Chicago. Also, we have a bunch of stuff that we have going on during the week, every week. Tuesdays is a live performance open mic with our monthly What's the Word edition of Open Mic, which is powered by Power92. Um, Every uh, Wednesdays, we have Wellness Wednesdays where we have different fitness aspects of wellness, um yoga reiki treatment dance class and we're trying to implement all of these things thursday is a more chill vibe a more social setting where we have karaoke game night we just want to get people out having fun you know sharing in libations and socially networking and then we have stuff on the weekends every weekend and what we really want people to get excited about is the fact that tribe house is putting together something very special for everyone. We want people to get excited about the membership platform. We want people to get excited about really being a part of a group of individuals who see progress in the tribe, the mentality of tribe, the growth of tribe, the potential of tribe. And we want to get people, we want to get people excited about being artists. We want to get people excited about investing in themselves and not having to be starving artists. We want people to get excited about having genuine backing from people who are just looking to connect with other hardworking individuals that are looking to build. You know what I'm saying? That's beautiful, man. And I love how our principles, it aligns with the treehouse. Because the treehouse, it started off as like, oh, it sounds cool. And I yeah. like climbing trees. And I never had a treehouse. But as I dug into it, it's like, oh, a treehouse. That's my African village roots coming in. Because what do people do? They meet up at the, the tree. But yeah. And it's, it's a baobab tree, the sacred tree. And the what do they do? They come to the tree and they talk about life. Everything. Talk about yeah. They share stories. The forum. They the share forum. folk tales. You know, the elders talk to the young. Yeah, yeah. They share experiences. And it's, and it's crazy how when I came up with the name, that was the furthest thing away from me. Yeah. But it's crazy how I, as I'm doing it, that's, it you can't run it away it from your destiny. It. And, it, and it's, it's crazy how that also aligns with that principle of the tribe house with unity, you know, with togetherness and creating a safe space. And, you know, I'm excited, you know, to work with you all in the future, hopefully. Yes, and I'm excited. Course. You know, for you know the treehouse listeners to come, you know, spam them, blow them up, follow them. Yeah. Because let's come together and let's make this year great. Let's make our Amen. future amazing, and let's continue to like, let's continue to kill shit. Yeah. You know? Try. <laughs> treehouse try. You feel me? You already this know. Uh, can I get an across leg stance? With that being said, stay hydrated. Mm, stay hydrated. <laughs> stay breathing in that good ass oxygen. And most importantly, stay basic.